Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today what I'm going to show you is how to paint the Bersaglieri, the elite troops of the Italian divisions during the Second World War, and indeed a few centuries beforehand. Well, a few decades at least. Uh, the history of the Bersaglieri is actually really interesting because they came about from a land which didn't have a lot of room where cavalry was going to make a lot of sense. So instead, they cooked up this idea of sharpshooters, you know, real marksmen, who were incredibly physically fit and basically replaced cavalry. Uh, it's, it's nuts. Really interesting read, and I'll pop a couple of links in the description so you can follow along with that too. Now, this miniature was very kindly sent along from Warlord Games for me to have a play with and see what I would come up with. And I think the core of it is very similar to the uh, Italian painting guide I've already done. But there are one or two little tweaks, changes in technique that I've either learned or might think look a little better on these guys. So I am going to speed through some of these uh, steps, but for the most part, it'll all be included here. As well, all of the paints will be listed in the description as always. So let's get started. In the previous video I did on painting Italians, I talked a little bit about Grigio Verde, which is literally grey-green. And each of the colours that I've got in front of me here, we're going to use today, because it was quite similar, once it had got a little bit of sun and battlefield conditions on it, to German field grey. We are going to paint it very slightly differently to how we would Germans, which will give us a different finish, but the basis of it is going to be very similar. So I have here Vallejo's German field grey. On the end here, I've got field grey from the army painter. And in the middle, this is technically an army painter paint, but the Warlord Games rapid deployment range, you can get directly from them. And this German army field grey, it's a wonderful colour. So I thoroughly recommend picking it up. Uh, if you don't want to go to Warlord, you could substitute this for something like green grey, uh, 886 from Vallejo. But that's up to you. I'm going to use these three because I know they work. They're not too difficult to get your hands on. Now, since I have already covered painting Italians in that other video, I'm going to skip through some of these quite quickly. So we'll start off with tanned flesh to paint in his skin. You'll probably need a couple of coats of this over your primer. Now I am using Vallejo's light grey primer instead of uniform grey today, but honestly it's because it's what I had in my hand when I went outside. Then we're going to paint in his trousers with the Warlord German Army Field Grey. Now the trousers generally were washed more commonly than the rest of the uniform, so they tended to fade slightly more quickly than the tunics would. But there's nothing stopping you from painting the entire uniform in this colour, if you want them to look as though they've been in the field for a while. Now, I've actually got three, <laughs> three different colour uh, versions that I can show you later on that I've been painting up, uh, just to give you an idea of how much variety there can be in these uniforms. So don't feel as though you're stuck painting them just one way. Now for a solid base coat on that, you are going to need to apply two coats, but remember if you're painting five or ten guys at a time, it's not going to take you much extra. What I've got next, this is German uniform, and this is the nice grey-green colour, which is going to form the basis of our spanky, nice, clean Grigio Verde. Now at the moment, that's not going to look very good at all. Trust me. I know. <laughs> now on the back here, you'll see that I've tried to avoid painting in the cross belts, because I'm going to paint them quite a light colour later on. Don't worry too much if you do hit them, but if you can avoid them for now, it'll make that little bit of work easier later. For the stuff that's going to be black, uh, don't worry if you hit it. That will cover perfectly. Now to shift up the colour a little, and to give us a bit of texture, we're going to dry brush all of the uniform. Now, previously I would have used a much lighter grey here, but I've discovered, and this is one of the few changes I'd make, that using here stone grey instead, because uh, we're going to use that for highlighting later, if we dry brush it now, we get a nicer transition of colour. Stone grey is wonderful, because it's not, it's not quite green, it's not quite brown, it takes on a lot of the characteristics of the paint you're applying it over. So, just adding a bit of texture here, giving a sort of a proto-highlight, and this can go over the trousers as well. Now at this stage, that will look dreadful, but as always, keep the faith. We are still going to need a light grey, and honestly any light grey will do the job here, but I'm using Administratum grey to get in and paint in his collar. 
Just go straight over the top of the tie as well. And now we can start painting in some of the other details of his uniform. What I've got, this is the Army Painter's Field Grey, so the lightest of the ones that we've got. I'm going to paint in his uh, putties with this. And I'm also going to give his water bottle a quick coat. And then with Vallejo Game Color Khaki, we're going to paint in his uh, guest mask bag. And this is also the correct color for the uh, respirator bag, the later model. And with this as well, we'll also paint in these cross belts. So you probably want to use a smaller brush for this. Uh, but if your brush holds a tip, you can normally paint quite quickly without worrying too much. And here, all of the black parts of the uniform will apply some German gray. Now, this is just off black, but will work really well once it's shaded to give us a little bit of depth. So his boots, his belt, all that sort of stuff. Cruise in now, and a quick coat of this will do the job. And if he's properly dressed, don't forget his tie. Now, this stage I actually should have done before the German Grey that I've just applied. But what I'm going to do is paint in his rifle, or his carbine rather, and any other wooden details on the miniature with some beige brown. And I should have done this beforehand because then I would cover over the black bits with that German Grey. So I'm going to Finish this off and tidy that up off screen. The trouble with there being so many Italian weapons in World War II is that remembering which bits are what color is a real pain in the neck. Anyhow, with some German camo black brown, I'm going to paint in the strap on his weapon here. I was going to call it a rifle and then held my tongue. And also the strap up here on his helmet. When it comes to the helmets, I have seen a profusion of shades of green, uh, both in originals and museum pieces, reproductions and the like. So what I'm going to use today is the last of our field grey colours. This is German field grey from Vallejo. Uh, I've seen much darker. I've also seen one or two lighter colours. But field grey is pretty close to one of the museum pieces I've seen. So let's go with that. Now the final color that we'll apply before our first shade is going to be on his grenade. Now I'm using here flat red from Vallejo. Uh, these little things were pretty fiercely red. So let's cover this dude in. Now accepting the feathers, that is all of our base coats applied. But I need to talk to you very briefly about these monstrosities. So on the left here I've got the old Agrax Earth shade, and here is the new stuff. Allegedly, they're the same color, and if you apply them over a white primer to demonstrate that on YouTube, they will look the same color. That's all well and good. That is correct. But this stuff, this new junk, and I, I don't mean junk, I mean this new stuff, <laughs> uh, it is clingier, is the easiest way to describe it. It doesn't flow in the same way that the old stuff does. It has a little more of the contrast sort of gloopiness to it. It'll still flow into recesses, but not as quickly and as easily as the old stuff would. So what you end up with is a darker stain on flat surfaces. Not what you're probably going to want. So while they are the same color, applying them exactly the same as you would have done previously is going to give you a very different result. It's going to look much darker. So what I'd suggest, if you've got the new stuff, you want to thin this about 50-50 with Lamy and Medium, which is what I used to do with this stuff anyway. Uh, but if you do it to the new Agrax Earthshade, you'll get the same finish, because the medium is really the important part. So thin it out half and half. I've got my little pottle here mixed up already. This is what we're going to use. One of the other benefits of adding in the medium to this is that it's then difficult to really apply too much. We're just going to bucket this over the entire miniature. And as always, make sure that you are getting it into the recesses. You don't want anywhere left glowing from your uh, primer. But yeah, once this is applied, this is going to bring all of this together, and it will look much more natural. So once you've got a layer of this down, leave it for about half an hour somewhere sunny. Make sure it's thoroughly dry before we carry on painting, and let's get a look at what we have then. Now doesn't that look nicer? I'm always stunned by how much of a difference the shade will actually make, even when we've thinned it down. If you don't want to use Agrax Earthshade and you want to stick to something that hasn't changed, then I'd suggest Strong Tone from the Army Painter. 
uh, but you do still want to thin that down with some of their quick shade mixing medium. What I'm going to do now is just a few highlights, and I'm going to use stone grey on both the jacket and the trousers. Um, I don't need to do very much of this, because our dry brush will have taken care of most of the highlighting for us. But areas where I want a nice sharp edge, like up on his collar, and his uh, sleeves here, I can do that now with some of this. And same too on the trousers. Then with some Iraqi sand, we'll highlight the uh, khaki stuff we painted earlier. Then do highlight any of the black stuff that you fancy. Basalt grey is a nice medium tone grey, which has a little bit of blue to it. So it works quite well as our highlight here. Now with some Cadian flesh tone, I'm going to go over most of the skin, leaving just a little bit of our shaded tanned flesh in the recesses. And then for the highlight here, I'm going to use Vallejo flat flesh. You could use Kislev flesh instead if you prefer, or if you've just got it, but in the grand tradition of painting skin differently in every video I do, let's use this here. You'll see in the background here, I dubbed a little bit of the brown and the red together just to paint on his tongue. Um, you can paint that bottom row looking like teeth, but I tend to think it looks more like he's going err than ah as a result. <laughs> uh, but what I've got now is some ivory, and I'm going to paint in the top row of his teeth. I might very well do this off camera if I can't. Now I've got here, this is Vallejo Model Air Gunmetal, but any dark gunmetal color you like is going to work just fine in its place. Um, I also really like Iron Warriors from Citadel. Um, the paint that is, not the Chaos Space Marine Legion. But just a few dabs of this to make your metal look, well, metallic, is going to be really cool. Now to highlight the edge of the helmet, what I've got here, this is the Army paint of field grey from earlier. Just a little bit of this at the edges. Now we're finally at the stage, which you're probably here for, and we're going to paint in the feathers. And we're leaving this to last because, honestly, it's the easiest step to finish off as a final stage. Now these feathers in reality, if you've ever seen a black bird up close, you know, that glossy black, it's never just black. It's always got a bit of shiny blue, some green in there, and these are no different. So we're going to try to recreate that in miniature without it looking really garish. So I'm starting off here with black grey. Uh, you could just as well use the German grey we've used earlier. It's up to you. But a quick coat of this to lay down the base colour for the feathers. Now to try and simulate some of that colour shifting blue and green. What I have here, this is blue-gray pale from Vallejo, and it's a pale blue-gray. <laughs> what we'll do is just a few little tiny blips on the feathers. Uh, you want to be fairly sparing with this, because you'll, you'll see it's uh, really quite bright as it goes on. Now, if you're worried about painting straight lines, just get in and instead, little dibbly 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 dibblies on the edges will look a little more natural than actually perfect straight lines. So, however you want to do this, go for it. Now you'll see what I've got is quite rough little scratchy edges. We're trying to recreate the texture of the feathers here. Uh, it is a little more time consuming than doing it, I mean, just smashing a dry brush on there. You could try that too, but I do want these guys to look quite nice. And I figure you're not painting so many of them that a little bit of extra work won't make the difference. What I'm turning to now, this is Coelia Green Shade from Citadel. And it's one that I don't use very often, but I'm always really glad to have it when I need it. Uh, you could mix in a little blue and green ink together, uh, but this is just straight from the pot. It's really easy to use. So you'll see it gives us a funky green-blue shade in the recesses as it dries. And it also ties together a little flicky flicky flickies from earlier. Yeah, I really like how this works. And then what you'll see is we've got that greeny blue in the recesses, a little bluer at the tips, but it doesn't look just flat black. So 
What I've got is the blue-gray pail again, and I'm just going to dibble, very scientifically, dibble uh, at some of the tips of the feathers again to lighten them up and get back some more of the blue, because that uh, Coelia green shade will go kind of turquoise. But adding the blue in again, we get layers to our, our feathers, and it looks really nice. And like I said, that is a little fussier than it needs to be, but man, it's going to look so much cooler when it's done. They are really going to stand out on the table. So that's the painting done. What I'm going to do now is hit him with a matte varnish, and I'm then going to apply a base to him. Let's get a look at what he looks like when he is all finished. But just before we get to the spinny thing, let me show you the color comparison that I was talking about earlier. So from left to right. On the left here, this fellow is painted completely in the German field grey from Warlord Games. This fellow's jacket is the German uniform from Vallejo, so that darker green that we've used today, and German field grey trousers. These two dudes are painted using essentially the same methods. The major difference between the pair of them is that this guy was dry brushed with administratum grey before his highlights, and this fella was using the thinned down Agrax Earthshade. So if they look Similar, but just a little bit different. That's your reason why. Now on the end here, I've got another fella. His jacket is painted in this Warlord field gray, but his trousers are painted in the Army Painters field gray, so they're even lighter still. Same process, I dry brush with stone gray and then highlighted, but from left to right, you've got a decent chunk of variation in the uniforms, which are all still technically accurate, and you'd probably see a few mixes like this in reality. Nobody's uniform stayed the same as everybody around them. And so there at last, our Bersaglieri is complete. And I think this goes some way to show that just by switching up the method a little bit, you can get quite a different finish for your elite troops, your veterans, or just fellows who've been in the situation for a little while where they've not had access to fresh uniforms. But don't worry too much about whether or not they look properly grimy, those little changes will make a big difference. So again, thank you very much to Warlord for sending along the Bersaglieri here to have a play with. I've really enjoyed uh, testing out some theories and the feathers in particular, I'm pretty proud of. I think those look quite good on the table and hopefully they look neat to you as well. As well, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paint and glue, including my producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Andrew, Rod, and Jimmy. Your support means the world, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So, thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.